Thanks everyone. Today we are going to have a quick session on how to set custom configurations for different populations. All right, so we're actually going to work with Shoebox Standard today. And we'll go ahead and open up that platform. And you need to go into your settings tab in your automated test types. And you'll see here that you have a selection of active test types and inactive test types. I've actually gone ahead and pre-configured some of them. But let's go ahead and um, configure a brand new one. Can anyone uh, give me a scenario uh, that someone's come to you and requested a configuration for? Uh, children. Okay. And yeah. where would they be tested? A uh, pediatric clinic. And clinic. how's the noise level in that clinic? Um, generally, there are a lot of kids. Okay. So it's pretty noisy. Okay, and do you know the age of the kids that will be tested? Um, I would say starting around age three. Okay, yeah. okay. So um, that's quite useful. Uh, so what we'll do, we'll go ahead and we'll create a new child test type. We'll open that up. I strongly recommend changing the title uh, so that it's more specific. This is especially helpful when you have multiple people using the same system so that it's quite uh, self-explanatory in terms of what we're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and write um, child three years old plus. And then um, because it's going to be done in a relatively noisy environment, we're going to try and make it as streamlined as possible and therefore uh, pick two frequencies to select and not necessarily go down to threshold, but we'll stop at 25 decibels because what we're actually trying to do is detect hearing loss in general. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and put 25 dB to 70 dB and that's right in the title. The other thing that I'm going to put in the title is the actual frequencies that we're going to test. Because of the noise levels, I'm going to recommend that we leave off the low frequencies because that's often where the highest levels of noise are concentrated. So what I'm going to recommend is testing 2000 and 4000 Hertz for this instance. So that's something that we would also like to uh, put in the title bar, and you'll see why when we see the whole list. So there we go. So our test type name we see here, child three years old plus. Our testing range is going to vary between 25 decibels and 70 decibels, and we're going to be testing 2,000 and 4,000 hertz. In order to do that, we will actually open up our frequency configurer and we will remove 500, and we will remove 1,000 as well. So we see here that we have two frequencies listed on our active frequencies, and we return to the next screen, we see that those two frequencies are the same that are listed in the title here. Next, we will go and adjust our volume settings. So we mentioned that our lower testing volume, we want to stop at 25. And oh, our maximum volume level is already set to 70, so we are all set. But once again, when you come back, you can actually reconfirm this with what's in your title. In terms of your M panel, which is the maximum ambient noise level before the system will alert you that you've surpassed that level, we recommend that it sticks to the OSHA guidelines um, because those are, are, are the better guidelines to use in a noisier situation. The ANSI guidelines are also an option, but that um, is typically to help replicate a booth-like situation, and we know in this instance that that is not an option for testing in a busy pediatric clinic. In terms of some of these other options, um, they're really uh, about personal preference. However, because we are uh, dealing with children uniquely, I do recommend sticking with the child game, um, and those child games are further highlighted here. So we have um, an egg sorting game, a dog sorting game, a hockey game, and a cleaning game. I've actually found that the dog game is the one that's the most intuitive, so I always start my pediatric configurations with that one. I'm gonna go ahead and drag the egg game down and the hockey game down as well. 
because again, we're only testing two frequencies, so I feel that two games is sufficient and it might help um, keep the uh, attention of some of the younger children as opposed to providing a, a, a higher level of stimulation. So we've gone ahead and we've picked two of the child games. We're going to stick with Pure Tone because we're testing under headphones. The tutorial is really more adult based, so we've selected that as off. We've kept the encouragement on. Now the encouragement is twofold in Shoebox. Um, one is that you have a visual encouragement of a shooting star across the screen once you've successfully completed a frequency. But secondly, there's also auditory encouragement um, that the child will hear under headphones such as, good job, or keep listening. Um, so I find, especially with the younger kids, that that can really help keep their attention longer. In terms of display test data on screen, that is more of a teaching tool for training. So if you're doing clinical testing, you will want that to be selected as off. And then the results display mode, again, per personal preference, most of the time it's set to audiogram. If for some reason um, whoever is reviewing the results is more used to a tabular representation, then they can go ahead and select table. But for the most part, audiogram is what um, you would be selecting. So that is a run through of um, some of the configurable aspects of each test type. When we go back to the automated test types, we'll see now that I have four active test types. I have one for children three years old and plus. I have one here for children four to six years old with a reduced range. You'll see here for children 6 to 10 years old that I've increased that range, one because they're better able to go down to threshold and therefore uh, at 0 decibels um, would capture more thresholds than stopping at 10, but you would also need to be in a quieter environment than a, a relatively loud um, waiting room, for example, or side room of a pediatric clinic. Also, just in terms of safety, um, the older that the patient is, the more likely they are to uh, use the game appropriately, and therefore uh, you can expand the testing parameters with more confidence there. So for adults, um, you wouldn't typically need to reduce it at all, and you could uh, use as large of a testing range as you would like. And then here we see a screening test type up here. This is helpful, for example, when testing in schools or when you're needing a very quick test type. So just to highlight some of the differences, if I open up my child six to 10 years old, you'll see that I've picked four frequencies. I've already discussed the range. But one thing here that's different from the younger children is that I've actually picked the adult games. Now, even though they say adult games, Basically, they simply mean that they're more mature of a selection. So what I mean by that is here you'll see we have a card sorting game, which is just playing cards, which children at this age are pretty um, used to seeing and, and can recognize. The same is true of the orchestra game, which uses instruments to be sorted when they hear a sound. The Egypt game has some desert-like characters that they use, and the sitting game has um, things like uh, barbecue or uh, chair that you would use to sort. So still quite interesting uh, because we are changing the um, actual screens of the game, so help keeping attention, um, but not um, overloading people with too many options. Um, the other settings down here are the same as the first one that I went through, pure tone, tutorial being off as it's more geared towards adults, but the encouragement has been left on because even though these are older children, they can still benefit from some encouragement. So here at Shoebox, what we'd really like to see is for our users to customize the test types um, to best optimize their testing situations and the needs of their tests. So there are certain circumstances where only one active test type is needed. For example, if you're doing occupational health testing, those parameters are clearly outlined and um, you know, we very rarely uh, deviate from those. But if you are working with children or a clinical population, chances are you are seeing people of different age groups and for different purposes. 
Um, therefore, um, one of the big advantages of computerized or mobile audiometry is to be able to preset some of these factors um, that in the past had been done on the fly by specialists or people who were uh, specifically trained in testing hearing. Um, what we would recommend is if you do have access to an audiologist or um, a technician, um, ask them for some guidance on your test types and um, they can give you uh, some tips and tricks on how to maximize your testing time with each uh, cohort in your population. Um, and otherwise, if you don't have access to someone like that on your team, please contact us here at Shoebox and we would be happy to help guide you through your own configurations. Thank you. Thanks, Renee. Thank you. You're welcome.